Adobe Photoshop is your editor of choice, Aurora HDR also works as a plugin there. Simply open up the file you want to use. In this case, I'm going to take a raw file and drag it onto Photoshop. A new dialog opens for Adobe Camera Raw. My suggestion is don't do too much to the image here. If needed, recover your highlights and set a good white point and make sure that the balance of shadows is good so that you have a nice dynamic range in the source photo. Then from the bottom here, make sure to open this up as a smart object. This will give you the benefit of embedding the raw file into the Photoshop document as well as making filters non-destructive. Now you'll see the image is ready for use. From the filter menu, I'll choose Skylum Software, Aurora HDR. The plugin starts and the layer is handed off. It looks very similar to running Aurora HDR as a standalone app. From the pop-up menu here, you'll see the ability to remove chromatic aberration if needed, but the color denoise option isn't available because the raw file has already been converted. When ready, click the Create HDR option. Aurora goes to work and tries to pull out the most details. If we look at the before and after image, you see it really did a nice job of recovering some of the details. Slightly overexposed areas in the head of our iguana here and the shadowy region in the lower part of the image are filled in. You can see more depth and the shadows are properly lifted. If we look at the split screen image here, you can really see how those areas are better exposed. Remember, you still have additional controls here. So taking advantage of smart tone can really help balance things out. And from the HDR enhance section, options like microstructure can bring out details and a little bit of smart structure to help with contrast. In this case, I still want a natural looking image, but I want the details in the skin to really come through. I love the texture here on this iguana, and the fact that the skin starts to look three-dimensional is really advantageous. All right, that looks good. Let's come down here, take a look at the polarizing filter, and this helps with glare. So some of the areas on the brow there that were getting hit with sunlight that were glaring and a little bit shiny are knocked back down. And I like just a little bit of that for recovery. Let's use the adjustable gradient here and we'll set this so that it goes up from the bottom. We can adjust this here for a nice gentle transition. There we go. And on the bottom, I'm just gonna pull down the exposure a little bit but lift the shadows. And what that did is a little bit of a knockdown on those tree branches, so it pulls you into the subject. And let's finish that out with a vignette. There we go. But place the center right on our subject. There we go. Gentle feathering. And that looks good. We'll just back that off. And if you look at the before and the after, much better details and much better contrast. The skin just really comes to life. When I click apply, the results are returned to Adobe Photoshop and stored in the smart filter. The advantage here with the smart filter is that you can double click on the layer if needed and edit the raw file. So if you realize you skipped a step, for example, under lens correction, maybe I want to enable profile corrections here and specify the type of camera and lens I was using to recover it, or manually adjust things. Or perhaps you realize that you needed a little bit of additional sharpening. Let's adjust the sharpening here, holding down the Option or Alt key to refine the mask. Click OK. And the updated RAW file is going to be reprocessed by Aurora. It takes a moment, it reopens it, but loads the settings that you used last time and you just click apply if it looks good to you, and the image updates. All right, that looks great. Let's choose File, Save As, and as long as I capture that as a Photoshop file or as a layered TIFF, I'll be able to return to it and make changes in the future.